Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to securely attach a copper lug or terminal to a battery cable. And we're gonna talk about whether or not it's okay to just solder it or whether or not we should crimp it or maybe do both. So let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so let me take you underneath this pickup truck. Um, this is an early 90s Chevrolet pickup truck and this is going to be a prime example of me learning from my mistakes. So if you look right over here, you'll see that this is actually the cable that comes from the battery that goes to the starter motor. And the reason this vehicle is here is because about four years ago, this vehicle came in with the rotted out starter cable. And what I did was I replaced the cable and repaired it with one of these uh, copper lugs or terminals. And at the time, I was a pretty firm believer that soldering these connections was good enough. What I mean by that is basically taking the copper lug filling it up with solder and pushing this in there once the solder cools it hardens and this connection becomes pretty strong now in the years i've been doing this i've done a countless number of these things and for the most part this is the way i did them sometimes if i had it out of the vehicle and it was easy enough to do it i would use the crimping tool but a lot of times when we're doing something on the vehicle trying to repair it uh, it's kind of difficult to use the crimping tool that i have so a lot of times I would just solder these things on. Now, after doing some research, I found that a lot of people actually find this method to work pretty good. So I don't think I'm in the minority of believing that soldering this connection is good enough. There seems to be a lot of people that do it this way. Now, I don't see a problem with doing this if the cable is maybe somewhere inside the vehicle uh, where it's not really exposed to the outer elements and especially things like heat and vibration. Soldering will probably work just fine for that. But I think in this application, because this cable directly attaches itself to the starter motor, uh, you know, this starter motor is right underneath the exhaust manifold. And of course, the vibrations coming from the engine, I think makes this cable pretty susceptible to having a failed connection if it's not done right. And that's pretty much exactly what happened here. The copper terminal or copper lug that I attached to this thing uh, eventually came off. Now, it did take four years for that to happen, but to be honest with you, Whenever I attach one of these things, I pretty much want it to be permanent. I don't ever want it to come off. So from my experience, I would say that soldering this connection is not gonna be good enough. And like I said, it's probably okay for cables located inside the vehicle, maybe even under the hood, where it's attached directly to the battery and the battery is stationary, it doesn't move. But when you have a cable like this, where it's directly attached to the motor, there's gonna be a lot of heat and vibration, and this is where you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a really good connection. So coming around to do this a second time, we're going to not only crimp this thing, but I'm gonna go the extra step, and I'm also gonna solder it. So let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, so the first step to repairing this wire is we are going to need to cut back some of this insulation. Now, if you have a corroded end, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cut that end off so that you have nice, clean cable. And I've already gone ahead and done that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip some of this insulation and I'm just going to be using these scissors right here uh, because these scissors actually have kind of a, a rounded circle in the center there. And it's uh, a good way for me to just wrap it around the cable so that we can gently cut into the insulation. Now we're going to want to cut probably about an inch uh, from the end of it. So I'm going to go ahead and right about here and I'm just going to gently press down and cut through the insulation making sure not to push too hard to where we cut the actual cable so i'm just going to kind of go around in a circle and that's going to cut the insulation and if you look hopefully that shows up on camera you'll see a nice clean slit in the insulation and if we're lucky we're able to just kind of slide this thing off sometimes these don't come off that easy yeah this one's gonna be a little more difficult sometimes they just slide off but uh let me show you a little trick if it doesn't come off okay so i have a razor blade right here and we're just going to use this blade to cut a small slit in the insulation downward like that and that's going to open up this insulation so that we can spread it open and expose the copper wire. All right, so now that we have the cable ready, let's go ahead and move over to the table and let me show you what we're gonna be using. All right guys, so over here on the bench, we have a few of the items we're gonna need in order to do the job. Uh, number one, we have a torch and 
Your torch doesn't have to be map gas. Uh, you can also use propane. Propane does get hot enough. It's just that this is what we have in the shop and that's what I always use. So number one, you need a torch. And number two, we're gonna need some solder. And you wanna make sure that the solder you buy is going to be a rosin core solder. You don't wanna use an acid core. Acid core is gonna allow corrosion to happen inside of our connection. Next up, of course, we need the copper lug or terminal end. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get the correct size. If you look on the lug here, you'll see that this is a six gauge. Now six gauge is referring to the size of the wire that's going to go inside of here. Also, you wanna make sure that the eyelet size you have is correct for the stud you're gonna be putting on. So this is gonna be a 3 8 stud where we're attaching this to the starter motor. So this is a two odd and 3 8 eyelet. Next up, you're gonna need some type of crimping tool. And this is a crimping tool that I have. I've had this thing for years and uh, like I said, I don't use it too often because sometimes it's kind of difficult to use it if the cable is still attached to the vehicle, um, but it's pretty basic. This uh, has a spring loaded device inside of it. And what you do is essentially uh, slide the copper lug in here and uh, of course put your cable in and then we're gonna set this down and you're gonna take a hammer and give it a nice good whack at the top here. That's going to push this little anvil down onto the terminal and it's going to crimp the wire inside of that terminal. So that's what we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and move over to the vehicle and get started. All right, so moving back over to the vehicle, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to kind of uh, make sure that these strands of cable are nice and uniform. We don't want any fray wires or anything sticking out uh, because it's going to be a pretty tight fit on this end of the terminal. So when we go to put it in, we want to make sure that we don't have any frayed ends. So what I like to do is just kind of shove this in there and you'll see that we have these frayed ends sticking out. So we're just going to kind of twist them to make them kind of uh, bunch up with the other cable. So it's nice and tight so that we can slide this on there. Got one more fray. Let me get that twisted. And what we're really trying to do is just kind of compress the strands of cable together so that um, they fit nice and tight and neatly into this copper lug just like that and once we have it in there we're gonna want to just kind of twist this thing make sure we get those strands nice and compressed make sure that we're able to just slide this on and not have any frayed wires sticking out it's gonna do this a few times make sure we compress that wire so that when we go to slide this on, it just slides right on, just like that. All right, so now that we know our terminal slides on the cable easily, we're gonna go ahead and take it off and I'm gonna use a pair of vice grips and I'm going to clamp down on the end of the terminal, just like that, clamp it down so that I can hold the terminal while I heat it up with a torch. So let's go ahead and turn the torch on Now I'm going to set the torch down. I'm going to take my solder. We're going to heat up this terminal and I'm going to fill it with solder. Now, normally if I was going to do a solder only connection, I would pretty much fill it up about three quarters of the way. But because we're also going to crimp this, I'm only going to fill this about a quarter of the way so that we really only have solder inside the tip of this connection. So I'm going to go ahead and heat it up. Now, once we get this thing red hot, we're gonna start feeding solder into it, just like so. And like I said, we're not gonna fill it to the top. We only wanna put a little bit of solder in it. Make sure that solder is nice and liquefied before we try to stick the cable in it. Now, when we stick the cable in it, we're gonna to wanna to do it pretty quickly. Let's move over. Just like that. Okay, so now that we have our copper lug soldered onto the end of the cable, we're gonna go ahead and use this crimp tool. And what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm gonna use this frame right here as a support surface so that I can give this crimping tool a good whack. That way we can get a nice good crimp. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
slide the terminal in there and position it the way I want it. Right about there, I'm gonna release this spring. It's gonna kind of hold it in place here. Now that we have that terminal lined up in the crimping tool, I'm just gonna use a hammer. We're gonna give it a good smack. Now you gotta be real careful when you're doing this, okay? And you wanna make sure you're wearing eye protection. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's open this up, check it out. That looks like a pretty good crimp to me. All right, so after using the crimp tool, you can see we have a nice good punch in the center of that terminal there. And this connection is really tight. I, mean, I don't think this thing is going anywhere. All right, so now I'm just gonna slide a piece of uh, heat shrink tubing on there. Let's get it over the wire. Slide it on there, right about there. And I'm gonna take my little torch. I'm gonna take my little torch. and just heat up that heat shrink. All right, so now that we got everything sealed up properly, this is our new terminal connection. Let's go ahead and reattach it to the starter. All right guys, so there's our new connection to the starter motor. We're good to go. All right guys, so I know it's a pretty short video, but I just wanted to share this experience with you. Uh, it was a learning experience for me. And like I said, I used to really think that soldering the cable on to the terminal was good enough, but really crimping is a necessity if that cable is gonna be attached to something that's gonna generate a lot of heat and vibration. So let me know what you guys think. And if you guys have any tips or tricks for attaching a terminal to a cable, let us know in the comments section. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a like. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell, and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks.